In this demo, we're using NSO to create connectivity from customer workloads in a data center through an ASR 9K and out into an MPLS network. The data center is ACI, managed by APIC, and NSO is using APIC to create the service inside the data center and is directly adding the configuration into the 9K. Here is APIC managing my data center, and here is NSO. So in the NSO Service Manager, I'm going to create an instance of that end-to-end -end service. I'm going to create a service for my Human Resources Department. I'm going to use a XR0 PE node and I'm going to use my APIC. So I've now defined for NSO what is the service that I want to create. And NSO will now calculate the configuration necessary to make that service exist. This is the change that it's going to make through APIC to the data center. You see it's going to create a tenant, and the tenant has an application, a database, and a web server. And NSO is also going to add the configuration into the XR device to turn up the MPLS VPN and open up the interface into the data center. So what I'm looking at here is these are the changes that are made inside the NSO CDB. So this is the Yang representation of the service that I'm looking for. And then the NSO NEDs convert that into the native language of the, of the device to send those commands to the device. In the case of the iOS XR device, it's sending CLI. And in the case of APIC, it's sending a REST call containing all of the information that, that we saw in the CDB. So if I now commit that change, NSO has now sent those changes to the XR device and to APIC. And in APIC, we can see that there's a new tenant And as we can see, NSO has created a database, an application, and a web server, and it's created contracts between those components. As we can see, the VRF has three bridge domains for those three components. The next thing I'm going to show is migrating the endpoint from a Cisco IOS endpoint node to a Juniper device. So what all I have to do is pick the new PE node and pick a new link on that node. And now once again, NSO has calculated what does the configuration need to be in order for that service to exist successfully. And it's compared that with the current configuration of all the devices in the network, and it's found a number of differences. It's found that the Juniper device is missing all of the config, and of course the iOS device has config that doesn't need to be there anymore. So it's identified those differences, and now that information is passed to the respective NEDs, the Juniper NED and the iOS NED, and those NEDs will then make those changes adding the service into the Juniper and removing it from the iOS. So if I commit that, those changes are now applied. And in this case, there were no changes required to the data center part of the service. So I've moved the service from a Cisco endpoint to a Juniper endpoint. 